Chapter 29 The Great Bay It was the first days of August 2011, Friday August 5th to be exact. Naomi returned to school, the teachers had bought the story that she was sick and therefore had not attended classes, Naomi. Welcome, it's good to see that you are already recovered. What about your partner Tony Summer? He's still sick? Asked Professor Sonia. Ah, yes, I feel better now, eh? Yes. Tony is still very sick, he will be back in a few weeks according to what they say. Naomi responded, after which Professor Sonia left. And Naomi continued down the hallways until she reached the living room. From the house to meet Emily, Liza and Leisha, who were her best friends in the group. Meanwhile, Mariana, a short, thin girl with blonde hair, blue eyes, Leanne, Paula, ran into the room to inform those who were there that Maileth, Leonard, Richie, Natasha, Mayera and Joel. They had found information about the second Riddler. So Emily, Naomi, Liza and Leisha dispersed to the rest of the school to go find the rest of their friends to report this. Angie was with Alessio and Priscilla in the cafeteria received the news from Liza. Leisha went in search from Gavin who was with Bastian, Nick, Aaron, Roger, Arthur. John Paul near the Fudblesse field and finally Black, received the message from Naomi who was with Alverd, Adrian, Lewis in the West Corridor. So the three of them quickly notified the other leaders of the other groups, like Alex, that the afternoon after classes at the ranch they would talk about the second riddle. In the afternoon, Gavin, Angie and Black gave the space to Leanne, Paula and Mariana as representatives of their group to present the solution to the puzzle in the meeting room. After taking clues from different books and maps, we came to the conclusion that the place on the entire coast to which the riddle refers is Captain Jolly Drake's Great Colorado Bay. This place is very large, but specifically it is refers to the sector of the Jolly Drake village, and the island of the abandoned ship, said Paula, we believe that. And as I told Joel in the morning, it would be a good place to use the Zeppelin and thus get there, this place it is a little far away, added Paula. If you decide to go on horses or on foot, it can take many hours, and it is also dangerous. There are two entrances through the Savagreb caverns, entering through the home oak forest, and another through the beach to find the formation with the tail of the whale. These two sectors have many very dangerous creatures if faced with them. I would recommend using the Zeppelin and leaving the crew near the captain's villa or abandoned ship, said Mariana. Well, let's go. There is Tony, as I had told you. He is looking for the celestial deity of Thor, said Naomi with encouragement. The wise one also mentioned that one of the twelve sages is located in that place. I imagine that it must be in the villa where he is, said Black, we will have to go in two groups, one that looks for Tony and helps him obtain the summon and the other group that looks for the sage in the village, he said Angie, I would think that the trip should be made on foot or horse. Using the zeppelin for an expedition like this could be risky, they would capture us. I think that the Zeppelin will be useful once the mission is a success and it picks up the crew to return to the ranch, said Gavin. In addition to the fact that the village is on the other side of the sea, you have to cross in boats, with the Zeppelin what we would do would be attract attention. And the captain's abandoned ship is located on an island very close to La Village, added Paula, it could be that we need three groups in that case, Angie suggested. We will decide that in a while, said Black, will they only send people from the group with the weapons, or will there be support groups, like in the amusement park? Gavin asked. That's exactly what I'm thinking, about what will be more convenient this time, Angie said, you should keep in mind that the nav radios will only work in the village, once there. They will be able to communicate with us at the ranch, said Mariana. True, the signal does not work in the jungle, beach or caves, said Leanne. You should think about it carefully. 
This is a mission a little more complex than going to that theme park, added Paula. We will do the following, Gavin, Chaka, Roger, Lewis and Emily. You stay at the ranch to rest, Naomi, you too. We will go in search of Tony, we will go to the Great Bay Black, me, Alessio, Priscilla, Mariah, Albert and Adrian. Angie explained, Bastian and Angelica are not going. Roger asked, no. Bastian asked me that he needed to take his new axe to forge at the blacksmith shop. He will be back soon. Angelica woke up sick this morning. It seems like she got sick from the cotton candy and the candy apples. Angie indicated, just one question Naomi, what is Tony like? His appearance? We need to know to be able to identify him. Black asked, he is a short, thick boy, with light skin, short blonde hair, brown eyes, he is a ninja, but he is a fighter of different fighting styles. He has some fighting gloves in his hands, that is his discipline and his weapon are some silver nunchakus, silver chakus. But it is likely that due to his exposure to the sun his cheeks are red ha 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 ha. He always gets like this when he comes into contact with the sun, in a bad mood. Angry or laughing? Naomi argued and the whole room laughed. Angie, how will they be divided? Asked Paula, in two groups, to be balanced. In three groups they would have a disadvantage in case of being in danger, better a trio and a group of four, said Mariana. I thought what would you say in, fours, as our teacher mentioned in that history class at Piscuit, said Roger, ha ha ha. True, how can I forget that, Adrian laughed. Shoo, and Priscilla silenced everyone so that Angie could give a, of course. I would just like to know a little more about the information about whether there are more path options to get to the village, said Angie. We think that the sage must be in the villa as the only place with civilization in the Great Bay. So, according to the maps, there are only two paths. Both the one to the Savagreb caverns and the one to access through the beach and the jungle, said Paula. That's why I told them that the best thing is in two groups. Mariana suggested again. The home oak forest has connectivity with the caves, after crossing the caves. You will reach the beach sector on the other side of the whale tail and there you will cross a jungle until you come across the beach again, to reach the boats that take you to the villa. While the path from the beach will have to cross the seashore until you reach the crossing of the whale's tail, there it will be the jungle, there. You must be careful with the low tide and the high tide, added Natasha, be careful. The enemies in the caves, jungle, sea and the beach, are powerful and dangerous, said Mariana. I advise you bring potions, elixirs and antidotes, for your own good, said Paula. Okay, then we will do it like this, the first group will leave the ranch to the Ensenar forest. Passing through the caverns until reaching the beach, that first group will be Black, Alvard, Adrian. and Mariah, while the second group, me, Alessio, Priscilla, we will go along the beach to the seashore, we will cross the jungle and get to the other side. There we will meet with the first group and we will go to the villa, Angie explained while drawing the roots on a map, what if we all take one path and that's it? said Adrian. We're looking for several things, silly, the boy Tony could be on one path or the other, we could find Mary Cross too. It's better to do both. Roads and then arrive as a meeting point at the beach to cross with the boats, if there are no traces of him on any road, it is clear that he will be in the villa. If we do not find him there, we will go to the island of the captain's abandoned ship. Black answered with disdain, what time and when will we leave? Asked Alvard. Bastian said yesterday the 45th of August. Roger said jokingly, we must go at dawn, the tide is high at night, but it descends during dawn. So we can cross without problems along the seashore as long as the sun is with us, said Angie, two in the morning, to be exact. Around five or six in the morning we will be there early at low tide, said Priscilla, 
I just hope Tony is okay, he had few supplies and potions in his backpack. I just hope he hasn't had heat stroke or dehydration, said Naomi with concern. Naomi, is it, did you say Tony uses nunchucks? Mariah asked, yes. Why? Ask Naomi, well. Angelica asked me to bring these golden nunchucks that she won in the minigames at the amusement park. She said maybe they would be useful to us on this mission, said Mariah. Sure, take them. Comma. Give them to him. That weapon is much more powerful compared to the one he already has, Naomi exclaimed. What did they decide about the Zeppelin? We won't use it in this mission? I need to know. Since I will go with Sebastian to build a biodigester to create gas to use as fuel, so we won't have to buy at the gas station and get caught, said Joel, of course, but not at the beginning. We will be be cautious, remember that the Sentinels have faster and more modern weapons and vehicles than the old Zeppelin thanks to that technological race that overwhelms the entire town. If we fly with it around, they would catch us when we arrive at the villa and we comply with the mission, the Novs will work again, we will send a message to you. Sebastian or Maleth to go after us with the ship, Gavin will be in charge of the other groups to find out about the remaining riddles, Angie said in conclusion. Everyone went to their rooms to get their backpacks ready, it was around 5 in the afternoon. Everyone would go out with their hoods to go unnoticed by the sentinels from the ranch to the two roads that had been agreed upon. The boys in their backpacks equipped themselves with water, food, sweets, potions, nuts, antidotes, ethers and elixirs for the exploration. At around 6 o'clock, they went to sleep, since, at 2 in the morning, they it would be Saturday. The mission to Great Bay would begin. The first group of Black, Alverd, Adrian and Mariah had to trace the route through Bosque del Encinar, the Savagreb Caverns to reach the Great Colorado Bay. It was around 2 in the morning, Black, Alverd, Adrian, Mariah, Angie, Alessio, Priscilla left the ranch through the streets of Green Hills. Heading towards the two paths that the groups had decided on, the first group walked for an hour until they reached the Encinar Forest, there, they began to cross the paths. Where in this all kinds of creatures began to appear such as snakes, wolves, goblins to fight them, they got rid of these nuisances easily, everything sounded very quiet. In the forest in the background you could hear the howls of the wolves and coyotes, the hooting of the owls, around four in the morning, they arrived at the entrance to the Savagreb caverns. Before entering the cave, the boys took out some flashlights from their backpacks to place them like a pin on their clothes. Once inside the cave, they could see how the bats were hanging in the sky. Everything was very quiet, the only one sound was the dripping of water leaks, on this journey there were vampires, scorpions, and snakes that tried to attack them. Fortunately, these enemies were easily defeated again by the group. After following the path, Adrian stopped and tried to take a chocolate cake out of his backpack. What are you doing? Keep that. Do you want to die? Alvord said brusquely. Why? I'm hungry. What's wrong with you? Idiot? Don't talk nonsense. Adrian said with disdain, Alvord is right, put that away, the bad droppings are in the air, if you open that, it will be contaminated and you could die before we get out of this cave, said Black, why? Mariah asked, histoplasmosis, it is a disease transmitted by bats. They recommend that when you go to the caves, do not consume food, do not touch anything, if you do, Wash your hands, put that away and wait until we get to the beach. We will eat there, Alvord replied. Bah, okay, Adrian responded resignedly. They had spent more than 20 minutes in the cave, clinging to rocks to climb or descend the levels of the cave. They began to observe the first stalactites and stalagmites in their surroundings, the speleothems and vertical structures on the floor and in the sky of the cave looked impressive, for some reason. This segment of the cave began to light up little by little. The boys were impressed, 
but they knew that there were still hours before the sun would rise. And it was very difficult for daylight to penetrate until here, so they continued advancing, until they reached a crossroads, where the segment of rock formations ended. At that intersection, there were three paths, everyone was wondering which one they should take to get to the beach, so Mariah took out a map and Albert and Adrian analyzed it. Black had a compass in his pocket so with it they managed to locate themselves, by deciphering the map, they observed that the first path was a segment even further underground. It was one of the paths that connected with the catacombs, the second path was the one that had an exit to the beach and the last path connected with the Piscuit Mines. Since the old rails could be seen on the ground, as well as torches that at one time illuminated the mine roads. So they took the center path, it was around 4 in the morning. There was about an hour left until dawn and the drop in sea level. After continuing walking with flashlights and eliminating new enemies like beetles, worms, more bats and scorpions. Arrived at a segment where a glow could be seen. Look at that. Let's go see. Said Albert and they continued climbing the rocks, they arrived at a wide pit. Illuminated thanks to the quartz and crystals that were on the walls of the cave, a small river with a waterfall traced this area of the cave where at the bottom you could appreciate pearls, gems, rubies, sapphires, emeralds, diamonds that came out of the rocks for more than millions of years after completing their process of transforming carbon rocks. This part of the cave connected with the mine, in the mines they were extracted minerals and metals such as gold, silver and bronze, in this sector were the precious stones. After continuing to advance they observed that on the other side of a small river, not very deep, similar to a pool, was the entrance to continue to the beach. Thus they crossed through the middle of the pool, the water was up to their knees, crossing the river. They took the opportunity to take some pearls and other crystals similar to marbles to take to their friends when the mission was over. After continuing through the entrance, the cave became dark again, the natural light had ended from the segments of the crystals and diamonds that shone as if they had their own light. As they advanced, the water levels began to be felt about an inch. With shells and hermit crabs, it means we are already close to the beach, Daniel Black told the group. Hours passed and finally it was six in the morning, it had dawned, and in the distance you could see the sunlight at the end of the tunnel. Once they left the cave, the sea level had dropped. In the distance you could see the small villa of Jolly Drake, while a rainbow was formed by the water vapor of the waves that bounced on the rocks very close to the cave. After leaving the cave and going down to the beach, Albert told them that they would walk to the beach to wash their hands, take off their shoes and enter the seawater. This to detoxify and cleanse the body due to exposure to histoplasmosis in the cave. In addition to accelerating the healing of the wounds, injuries from the sharp rocks that they had to climb, its magnesium content helps reduce stress and anxiety. As we must walk along the beach to the villa, it will help us not fall into stress due to fatigue, it will help us reduce fatigue and accelerates muscle recovery, said Albert. Upon arriving at the beach, there was a sector where there was no sand, but the ground was completely made up of shells and shells. Mariah mentioned that this was the only beach sector in the world that it had that peculiarity, after leaving the bath in the seawater. They reached the shore around some palm trees and there they stopped to eat, and then continued on their way to the villa. We have arrived on time, if you look closely. There is the tail of the whale, the rock formation, it is the one that joins the two paths to reach the town, or rather, to the area where the boats are, along that path. Angie and the others will arrive. We must wait for you later near the boats, please, eat well and hydrate yourselves well. The sun is very strong, we could get heat stroke, or worse still. Start to see illusions about the sea and the sand, this place, it's like a desert, Black said. After finishing eating, 
Everyone got ready and continued the trip along the seashore to arrive before noon at the boat dock to wait for their friends who would come from the other sector. After several minutes of walking, they arrived at the entrance from another sector of the jungle, where they entered and observed an estuary. Daniel Black informed the group that they had to cross it to finally find the second sector of the beach and reach the boats, so they began to enter through the weeds and vines. Black, Albert, Adrian and Mariah entered with small knives to cut the undergrowth and make their way, they were already inside the Colorado jungle. Around them they could appreciate the natural beauties of this jungle, the monkeys, macaws with their red feathers, blue, yellow and white in the treetops, processions of termites on the tree trunks. Frogs, reptiles such as salamanders and snakes, herons near the estuary. In the clearings among the foliage some pelicans and seagulls flying through the air. The toucans stalking the nests of other birds are near fruit trees such as papaya and bananas, in addition to another estuary that they found where there were flamingos, some pumas. Panthers and leopards drank water from the estuary along with the tapirs, coatis and deer, the hummingbirds they looked happy around the pistols of hanging flowers as well as the quetzals that stopped to rest on some branches of the trees, where they had sloth bears and anteaters that rested a little. After continuing to advance, the ground became more swampy due to the jungle, until they began to observe that there was a mangrove nearby, and they had to look for another route to continue advancing. Since the earth and quicksand of the mangrove could absorb them, the boys believed that they were going around in circles, when suddenly the compass stopped working. Its magnetism was not optimal and it was not doing its job. It was starting to get late, they were wasting a lot of time and they noticed how around them. There was a group of wild boars ready to attack them, so they all stood in a circle protecting their backs to be prepared, they began to hear a screech and bangs. In the chest that came from the undergrowth, the wild boars, snakes and gorillas that appeared created a corridor and a two-meter high. Hairy creature with a gorilla face began to walk on all fours and began to make sounds, uh, 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 ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, uh, uh, what the hell is that? Mariah asked scared. Be ready to attack, said Alvard getting his whip ready. It's the chimera, it's an old legend. I imagine the witch is behind this, just look at her eyes, she wants us not to advance, he said black. But what is the chimera? asked Mariah, the chimera has been a legend for a long time, it is a demon or creature that seeks out non-believers, the Eshenites are exempt from this. People with a lack of faith, this is annoying to chimera and she appears before them, also to the people who curse their enemies. She looks for these people to hit them with her huge arms and hairy claws and then she eats them. Explained Black, but we haven't done either of those two things, said Alvard, of course not, but the witch can do anything, she turns us against us, we must fight. The duel against Chimera began. She summoned a gorilla and a wild boar next to her to fight them. Mariah used Reflect to protect the group, the gorilla began to use Rokarga and many rocks, mud bombs came to hit the group. The boar began to dig and hid under the ground, causing it to avoid Reflex bar and appear below the group creating an earthquake, which inflicted a lot of damage. Mariah used Fastega to give the group agility and speed to be able to evade the future attacks of Rokarga from these enemies. The chimera began to make a roar that caused the group to frenzy. Mariah used Statuna and healed her friends, Black, Alvard and Adrian were ready to fight after getting up from the strong blow of the boar in the inner frenzy. Black launched Bernaga's bullets with his new weapon the bazooka, a very strong blow towards the boar and the gorilla, Alvard attacked the boar with his whip. While Adrian sent explosives against the gorilla, Following this, the chimera ordered her boar and the gorilla to throw Bursaka at him, and he began an attack of madness and anger at the berserk. Witch Black assumed that she was going to use her special attack, 
as she began to beat his chest for a long time while his boar and his gorilla fought over him. Mariah used Hilaga and healed the energy of her friends in the group, Black used his special attack and launched eight shots of Electraga against the gorilla and the wild boar, killing them due to the enormous impact that those shots with the bazooka had caused. The chimera was still in her ritual of beating her chest. When she finally made a roar and opened her snout to launch an elemental beam at the group, a strong impact, the chimera was left weak after her special attack. Mariah used Hilaga again to heal everyone, Black fired a quarga at him, Adrian threw a grenade at him, but thanks to his thief ability from his ring on his arm, he placed a grenade near the chimera. While Albert activated the grenades with the cross of his whip, making after these exploded, and causing a lot of damage to the chimera. The creature again tried to physically hit Adrian and Albert with its arms. Alvard took the opportunity to summon Boren and with his Chains of Pain special attack. The Chimera suffered enormous damage, but lost his next turn, so Adrian summoned Raziel, where a figure with wings and a glow appeared from the sky, the air began to blow harder. It was a blast from Windaga with his sword, causing the Chimera to be completely defeated and dissipating like a specter. The duel ended, a victory for the boys. That duel had taken them almost two hours, and they had to continue on their way since it was getting late. We need more summons, said Adrian. How many do we have? Asked Mariah. Well, Albert has Boren, Priscilla has Serena, Angie has Ganesha, Adrian has Raziel, Roger has Selassie, Gavin has Nikolash. Angelica he possesses the three fairy sisters, those are all the summons we have. This boy Tony is likely to be the one who will claim Thor if he finds him, said Black, let's continue, it's getting late, said Alvard. After defeating the Chimera, they continued advancing through the jungle trying to find a way out to find the beach again. The second group, with Angie, Alessio and Priscilla, had to trace the route of the hot Piscuit Beach to reach the Colorado jungle and from there, reach the Great Colorado Bay, after walking from the ranch starting at 2 in the morning. Morning. And crossing through several districts and roads, they had finally arrived at Piscuit Beach, where in this sector, there was a passing hotel, called Tommy's Coco. Where the owner was a girl with blonde hair, blue eyes and very kind, named Ray Van Bongers, it was around 5.30 in the morning, there Angie. Alessio and Priscilla stopped to rest and eat something, they bought some provisions and potions for the long road. Since it was said that the path from the seashore to the rock formation of the whale's tail was quite a few kilometers, once ready, they left Ray's Passage Hotel and finally headed down the long road of sand. It will be better that we carry a canteen on our belts, in a few minutes the sun will begin to increase its intensity and get hotter, if we take sips of water and other liquids. We will be hydrated and we will not fall into the illusions that the blows of the sun can cause us. Heat, Angie suggested. Okay. It will take us about three hours at a normal walking pace to get to the jungle, there we will eat again. And after that we will continue until we leave that place to return to the beach and meet the others near the boats, commented Alessio. Comma. The tide will rise again around 5 or 6 in the afternoon, it will be better to hurry up and arrive in time. Fortunately that area does not have problems with the water level, commented Priscilla, perfect, it's time to go. Angie said and took her backpack. This is the last place where there is a signal for the nav, you should send a message to the ranch, Alessio suggested, right. It will be to call them to keep them informed that we are about to start the road along the seashore, said Priscilla, Angie took out her nav from her backpack and sent a message to the ranch's nav. Where Gavin responded, hello, Curlies, did you get to the villa that quickly? Asked Gavin, no. Of course not, we arrived at a hotel on the way, there is still a signal here. We are a few minutes away from leaving for the jungle to get to the other side. 
From the whale's tail, said Angie, I was going to remind you, when you talk to the wise man in the villa, ask him about Mary Cross, maybe he will know something or give us some clues, Gavin suggested. Of course, no don't worry, I just have that in mind, said Angie, excellent, may luck be with you. Change and out, said he, after talking with Gavin, the trio began walking along the beach path, at around seven in the morning, to their right they had the sea, where it with the sound of its waves provided the atmosphere for the walk, to their left, the shadows created by the palm trees full of coconuts and some almond trees, and on the horizon. You could see where the hot air showed a little of the jungle that they had to cross, after several meters all kinds of enemies began to emerge, shells with leeches using viboga against them. Lobsters and crabs with large and sharp pincers, manta rays hidden under in the sand, some cacti with skull-like shells emerged from the sand, but thanks to the power of Alessio's sphere, Angie's archery and Priscilla's spellbook were easily defeated. The walk of sun and sand continued, the trio once again appreciated in the distance, where the blue line of the sea ended. The small fishing boats that were practicing their artisanal fishing, the ships that were throwing their nets to catch schools of tuna, barracudas, sharks. Because I hate them. Trawling and shark fishing should be illegal. Thousands of ecosystems are destroyed thanks to these practices that the Piscuit government allows, Angie said furiously as she walked and looked at the horizon. The artisanal fishermen in their small boats fished the small schools of snappers with their nets, and without neglecting diving to obtain lobsters, shells, clams, mussels, squid and octopus. Very close to the shore, thousands of turtles could be seen emerging from the sand, where their eggs hatched and they ran around bipedally for a few seconds. Until they then leaned with their front flippers towards the sea, and some of their mothers were still close to the shore where they were. Spawning, followed by this, in the ocean out to sea. Explosions of water came out of it, a couple of dolphins that were in a race, jumping over the waves and very close to them, a large whale came out of the water, jumped all over the place. High and was consumed again in the blue mantle, it was a spectacle that Angie, Alessio and Priscilla were appreciating as they wandered through the sand on the way to the jungle. The trio reached the jungle, they began to enter it, very similar to what Black, Alvard, Mariah and Adrian experienced in the other sector. After walking for about 30 minutes, a river divided the jungle into two parts, and near a stone they noticed a human body in the ground, with a karategi outfit, and near it there was a raft, look at that. It seems that this person came on that raft, said Angie. As they approached, Priscilla was surprised and said, isn't that the boy Tony? Look, he is light-skinned, has blonde hair and has some nunchakus on his black belt. Yeah, is he? It is, said Alessio. Priscilla approached him and placed her ear on his chest, coming to the conclusion that the boy was alive, but unconscious. What happened to him? Angie said. Look at his backpack, it's empty, said Alessio. Maybe he ran out of supplies and due to dehydration he fell here. Let's take him to a safer place, it's dangerous here. These rivers usually have crocodiles, boas, anacondas, and if the tide rises. Don't even think about it, there are also jellyfish and they can create states of paralysis, said Priscilla. Alessio took Tony and carried him on his shoulders. The boys used the raft to cross to the other side of the river. As they advanced to a clearing where the vegetation was smaller, they noticed that the river came from a mangrove. Priscilla suggested eating to that the same thing as Tony would not happen to them. They would cure Tony right there with potions or with the light magic of the serene deity that Priscilla could invoke. Angie took out some cookies, water, and food from her backpack. Alessio the same. Priscilla was helping Tony recover but all this was going to be interrupted by a little white-faced monkey who approached Angie to ask for one of the cookies he ate. 
The little monkey extended his little hand towards her. Angie spoke to him as if he were a child and he agreed to give her one of her cookies, while Priscilla said, don't do that. Why? Angie said. That's why. Look up. And when you saw the tops of the trees that surrounded them. It was an ambush of white-faced monkeys, the little monkey that Angie had summoned to her friends. There were more than a hundred of them, the monkeys quickly stole their backpacks, taking them. Your supplies, liquids and potions. Demons, said Priscilla, I'm sorry guys. I had no idea, said Angie. Priscilla began to bow and invoke the serene deity, and she used Hilaga to heal Tony. When this was happening, among the undergrowth, a creature appeared like a small monkey, with a beret, had a beard, a staff and was doing a very strange sound, iki, aki, maka, like a primitive dialect. Damn, it just can't be. We're in trouble. Angie said worriedly, what the hell is that creature? Priscilla asked, do you know what it is, Angie? Alessio mentioned to Angie, it's a legend, like Fleur. That creature is called Lord of the Moss, or Lord Moss, it is a legend that talks about a small monkey with a beard, a beret, its white face with red eyes, it has a large tail, sharp nails. This creature appeared to those who dragged problems, an atmosphere of negativity in his social group, it is very difficult to see it during the day, it is only seen at night. It also appears to those who consume drugs, and with this, Lord Moss takes advantage of the psychedelia of drugs and acids to take them away, something similar to goblins and gnomes, in fact. He is their boss, Lord Moss seduces people to kidnap them, and takes them to his lair to eat them, they take advantage of your vulnerability, it doesn't matter your condition. This one wanders through the mountains forests and unpopulated pastures, letting out great screams that chill the blood, which can be heard from great distances, Angie explained. Surely he discovered us because of Tony's condition, Priscilla hurry up. Cure it, Alessio shouted, I'm trying to do that. Priscilla said in panic, although, look at her eyes. I wouldn't be surprised if this is the work of the witch, as I said, it can only be seen at night, and they are little more than half day, said Angie. Priscilla summoned Serena finally and she came out of a white glow, a very beautiful female figure with a white and sky blue veil came down from the glow. She used Hilaga to heal Tony and the rest of the group, after this, the summon dissipated, Tony woke up and stood up where am I? Who are you guys? said Tony. Then we will explain to you. Help us in this duel, said Angie. So Tony joined Angie, Priscilla, Alessio to fight Lord Moss. The duel began, Lord Moss summoned goblins with him to fight. Small vermin that jumped on top of some mushrooms red with red and white, and they used Viboga, Paralizaga and Floriga. Lord Moss launched Dark Naga against the group, but fortunately the group managed to evade the blindness that it was creating, then Tony used his nunchakus, he eliminated two goblins with them. Angie launched her arrows with Bernaga against the vermin, followed by Bernaga used by Priscilla and finally a spear of fire launched by Alessio. Lord Moss used the thief's ability in seeing that they did not have healing and recovery items. He began to steal magical power and vitality from them. Comma. Since he had some small bracelets on his hands, the vermin attacked again with Floriga. Tony used his physical hitting skills and launched a jab towards Lord Moss. Angie launched Electraga arrows again, and the powerful yellow arrows with her crossbow of gold eliminated the vermin. Priscilla launched Electraga and a yellow glow from the sky fell on Lord Moss. Alessio again launched his sphere with a yellow glow of Electraga. The enemy had lost a lot of vitality, but due to his absorption of magical power and vitality by using Dreni, Osmosis and Wizarda. He recovered little by little, Tony had charged his energy and was ready to use his special attack and delivered a series of physical blows, including a jab, uppercut, dragon fist, dragon strike. Knee. Hurricane kick, body strike, 
head strike, heel strike, submission, karate strike, K strike, ground throw. This destabilized Lord Moss. There were almost 12 impacts with his special. Doing a lot of damage to the creature, Angie was prepared to summon Ganesha, but Tony stopped her. Wait, don't do that summon. I will recharge my energy again for my second special attack, said Tony. So Angie launched Bernaga arrows again to set the enemy on fire, Alessio launched his spear with Frizaga again, and Priscilla launched a quarga against Lord Moss. The creature launched several physical attacks with its tail, then blows with its claws, to finally use his special attack invoking a stampede of forest animals of all kinds to hit the group. Finally Tony charged his energy and with his nunchakus launched an elemental helix of Bernaga, Frizaga and Electraga defeating the enemy and giving victory to the cluster. After finishing the duel, the trio congratulated Tony. That special attack of kicks, punches and strikes was spectacular. Angie said, congratulating Tony, yes, it is my specialty, my discipline is based on a ninja. My nunchakus are my special weapon, since I was a child I had other weapons, wood sai, iron jato, bronchicus, but I also specialize in physical blows. All these ten years I have trained in a dojo with my teacher Wang Beck Park. He has taught me all kinds of techniques such as karate, taekwondo, judo, martial arts, muay thai and boxing, by the way. Who are you? What are you doing here? I must also thank you for healing me. I lost consciousness, a wave hit me, my head hit some rocks, I walked a few meters, everything went off. I thought I would die in that place, added Tony, we are a group that fights against a prophecy. We are from the 10th year of Rhoda school, we knew about you since you were assigned to our house. We came here to look for a wise man who will help us with important information about the prophecy, and at the same time to look for you, said Priscilla, look for me? Who told you that I was in the Great Bay? Tony asked confused, Naomi, she joined our group after meeting her at the amusement park and told us about you, Alessio answered, oh I understand. If she she told me that she would go to that place to give what she deserved to a clown in a circus, and well, like her, I also know about the prophecy, my teacher at the dojo told me about it. I met Naomi a long time ago in Green Hills, I came to look for the summon of Thor as a weapon to fight against the prophecy, said Tony, join our group, you will be a great help, and together. We will win, Angie mentioned, if she did it, so did I, I will join, it is good to have allies, I did not attend the school. The reason why I did not attend the beginning of classes after my approved application was to come here, I sent the school a document that I was sick and he would return as soon as he was recovered. They believed it, ha, ha, ha. Tony laughed, do you? Already know the location of the summon? Alessio asked, it's in the villa, I imagine you are also heading there. Said Tony, yes, the sage is in that place, said Priscilla. We better hurry before it gets dark, said Angie, that's how Tony, Angie, Alessio and Priscilla continued on their way through the jungle, until after a few minutes of walking. They met the first group of Black, Adrian, Mariah and Alvard. But this was worrying for the group, since they should not meet in this place, but in the boats. They felt that they were lost in the jungle, night was about to fall, however, they took advantage of the moment to introduce Tony to the others, and he told them everything that had happened to them. Serena's summon was a great help in curing you. Said Black, that's right, I appreciate it, said Tony, we weren't supposed to meet here, but the jungle is trying to lose us. So let's all continue together to find the way to the beach, it's getting dark, he said Angie, it would be better to camp here, if we go out to the beach. The tide will rise and we will be trapped, Tony suggested as he pointed with his hands to the area where they were in the bushes, if we stay here, the jungle creatures will follow us. Attacking. 
We have invaded their territory, we must rest, unless someone stands guard, said Adrian. The forest will be with you guys, said a mysterious voice in the foliage of the forest. After hearing that voice, the boys observed a puma approaching through the jungle, crushing the dry leaves with its claws. Who are you? Are you the wise one? Angie asked. No, it's not me. I'm his servant. I just came to inform you that you're on the right track. He's waiting for you at Jolly Drake's village, and the animals in the forest don't see you. They will attack tonight if they join the Covenant of the Forest, said the Puma, Covenant of the Forest? Ask Adrian, yes. The Covenant of the Forest unites you as if you were part of nature, due to its principles that are in their hearts, their love for nature, everyone can join him, said the Puma. How do we unite? Asked Tony. Just raise your right hand and say yes loudly towards the tops of the trees, and the covenant will be completed, said the puma, after doing that ritual. A green glow covered their bodies and the puma disappeared. Well, let's get the ground ready and camp here with our hoods as sheets and backpacks as pillows, or at least the ones that are left. Some monkeys robbed us very close to here and tomorrow we will continue, said Angie. Were they attacked by monkeys? How is that? Black asked, laughing, well, I fell into the trap. One of them wanted to be my friend, and when I gave him my cookies, a group of a hundred attacked us and took everything, we are without potions and supplies. Now that monkey is feasting on strawberry jam cookies, it was the last box Gavin had given me, said Angie. So everyone cleared the land, created a bonfire to keep away the mosquitoes. And finally night fell. Everyone began to talk to Tony about the witch and together they learned a little more about the boy. In addition to the fact that he was fascinated by the idea of living on the ranch. When they were close to going to sleep, in that silence of the jungle, they began to hear the rain coming from the sea. A storm was approaching. Lightning and thunder began to fall, the rain increased its intensity. When suddenly they began to notice that in their shoes the water was rising very close to their heels, the heavy rain had helped the sea level rise much more. Until they reached the camp and the bonfire they had made went out, when everyone joined their hands as the high tide that was already waist deep, some palm trees were beginning to fall. Where the sea waves could be seen stronger and they noticed how the storm created a hurricane or cyclone in the sea and this waterspout was approaching the group, after this. Everyone they closed their eyes and the water reached their necks, yet, all of them joined hands and the black glow took them all, it is as if they had lost consciousness. After a few hours. After opening their eyes, Angie and Tony woke up first, Black and Priscilla were floating near them. So they went to wake them up, everyone noticed that they were deep under the sea. The hurricane current had sucked them out to sea, they noticed that the others had not woken up yet, they had already that they were at the bottom of the sea and were still unconscious. So the four of them began to swim towards the depths. As they advanced towards the trench, they noticed that they could breathe under the sea, but that it was for a short time, less than half an hour. The light it was beginning to decrease, since they thought they had spent the entire night in the deep ocean, and the sun had already risen, Sunday had arrived. But before coming to the surface they had to look for their friends. After continuing to advance through the depths, they appreciated the beauties that they glimpsed, the corals, the anemones. Sunken ships, anchors, the schools of fish, but not everything was beautiful down there. Enemies began to approach against the four, piranhas, evil mermaids, octopuses and squids with poisonous ink. Sharks, eels and rays with their stingers in their tail using viboga, which the four easily defeated with their electraga magics. When they defeated the last group of enemies, they noticed Alverd. Adrian, Mariah and Alessio were already at the bottom in the sand. When they approached to save them, the ocean turned dark, everyone was wondering what was happening. 
Suddenly they began to observe as a light approached them, and grew brighter and brighter, a large mouth with sharp teeth attacked them, but they managed to avoid it. What kind of fish is that? said Priscilla, it's a lawfid, it's a fish that lives in the depths, attracts its prey with its light, and devours them with its sharp teeth, said Tony. The fish illuminated even more with its head and they noticed that it was a huge creature, on its head it had the body of a woman with bare breasts, long black hair, light skin and in one of its arms it was shaped like a fishing rod. Where he showed the light that illuminated, the rest of his body was a lawfid body. My name is Yoja Lafayette, Queen of the Ocean. The witch has ordered me to kill the invaders of the bay. Our vassals in the jungle and the cyclone did not finish off you, so I will do it, said the big fish. I knew this had to do with the witch. It seemed strange to me that such an unexpected storm and tsunami out there. She controls natural phenomena, said Angie. Let's fight, said Priscilla. She began the duel against Yoja. Priscilla used Electraga, but Yoja absorbed the thunder attack with her light arm. Don't use electric attacks, she is immune, you already saw it, said Priscilla. So Yoja launched a bite with his huge snout, but fortunately everyone avoided the attack. Angie launched Floriga with some green arrows and these did enormous damage to Yoja. And she opened her snout and launched Viboga with a series of thorns purple bullets launched by his teeth, it was a strong blow but it failed to create poisoning in the team, followed by this. Black launched several common bullets with his bazooka, to do damage, then Tony with his nunchakus made two attacks against Yoja and her with his light on his arm he launched Electraga at the boys. Returning the attack that Priscilla had used. Again Yoja summoned a group of piranhas and launched them against the group. Black with his rifle and Angie with her arrows managed to eliminate them before they hit with their mouth to avoid poisoning. Angie summoned Ganesha, but could not do it since something was wrong. It allowed him to invoke her under the sea, ha, ha, ha. The summon is impossible to perform in this place. The power of my master is so great that it prevents the magical power of the summons in this place, said Yoja. This she used her special attack and launched a huge Mitarga anchor from the sky to hit the group. The boys were starting to witness how they were running out of oxygen. Ha, ha, ha. They only have less than 10 minutes of oxygen left, then they will die, said Yoja. So Priscilla used her special attack and there were eight Floriga attacks against Yoja. Followed by Angie with her special attack of her crossbow where a green Floriga harpoon hit Yoja and finally Black with his bazooka fired a Floriga beam against Yoja. Tony who was still very weakened from using his attack twice in the last duel, he launched his nunchakus. With Floriga magic, leaving Yoja completely defeated, causing her to go towards the dark bottom of the sea as she fell into pieces, the group would take the victory under the sea. After the fight, Yoja dissipated and the body of the fish fell to the bottom of the pit. The boys quickly went down to rescue the others to wake them up, but when they went down, the oxygen ran out and the four's eyes closed, and everything went dark. After a while, everyone woke up on the seashore, everyone was wondering if it had been a dream. An illusion about what happened, where Tony got up and a guy with a conical straw hat spoke to him. Guys, welcome to the dock of the boats to Jolly Drake Village. The rental of the boats costs 2,000 rods, in half an hour they will be on the other side of the Bay Gulf, said the guy with the conical straw hat named Lorian Nguyen. Are we crossing yet? Angie asked. How strange was that duel with that fishwoman? Tony said. We don't know what happened. Alessio said. We were unconscious, right? Mariah asked. Yes. I would believe that the cyclone pushed us into the sea through the tsunami due to the heavy rain and waves and by defeating Yoja, the curse was broken and sent us back to the shore, said Black. Fortunately for us, brought us here, which was where we had to get to, said Albert. How will we know who the wise man is? 
asked Adrian, we will decide that when we get to the other side. We must hurry, as I see on that sign today is Sunday, we have almost 30 hours away from the ranch and tomorrow we must return to the school. So let's quickly look for the sage and the summon and in the afternoon, we will call the zeppelin, Angie said, and so everyone took four boats. In pairs they crossed to the other side of the gulf to reach Jolly Drake's village, eat something there to regain energy and look for the sage and the summon of Thor.